Canada in the 80s, a time when workers faced vanishing jobs, homelessness, and hunger. But other than the Salvation Army, there wasn't much help for those in need. With governments unwilling to act, it fell on regular people to take action. That's when the idea of a food bank was born, not as a long-term measure, but as something temporary until the wealth could trickle down as government promised. Today, there are more than 800 food banks across the country, feeding close to a million Canadians. But are food banks the best way to serve the hungry? Food banks are always running out of food. They have to have stricter rationing. Uh, they're stigmatizing. Uh, they deny people's dignity and choice, uh, which I think is a sort of fundamental in terms of human dignity in the sense of being having enough money in your pocket and going into a food store like anybody else and being able to purchase your own food. It feels terrible never having enough money. You feel like your self-esteem is taken away sometimes because you feel very low class. I'm on disability and by the time I pay my rent, I'm lucky if I have a couple dollars left over for groceries once my bills are paid. Food banks work well for big food corporations as they can unload unwanted food while getting tax breaks. You have to think about this from the business side. They want tax relief. They want a cheaper way of getting rid of their food. They want to be seen, though, to be doing their environmental bit. But the problem is it doesn't actually uh, achieve this. And the studies, the research shows that this is not actually what's occurring. In Woodstock, Ontario, a small multi-denominational church group may have found a more humane way to help those in need. Nine years ago, it closed its food bank and started a program called Food for Friends. In this program, hungry people are given a plastic card to buy their own food. Funding for the card comes from grocery shoppers. People are asked to donate 25 cents, some donate more when they go shopping, and they track it and they write us a check every month for the amount that they collect. It goes directly back on the cards for those who need them. The grocery stores collect the money and hand it over to the Food for Friends program. Then, clients are given their own card, much like a debit card. They can get their card, they can use coupons, and they can get taxable items from us. And then they can go to any one of the participating stores and use these cards. Uh, they're one-time use cards only, they're not electronic, although we do put an electronic strip on the back so that it, it makes it a little more inconspicuous. Chris Chapman runs the Foodland grocery store in Woodstock. They come in the store, they can buy whatever they like as long as it's not taxable. The idea is to get the people in here so that they can buy food for their family and food that they want. It's the food card that gives me more dignity because I can go out and pick what I want instead of be given what somebody else thinks I should have. It's hard to admit that you're on the system. People really look down on you. It's not a choice. Everybody has downturns in their life, and a lot of people, it's only a limited thing, and then six months later, they're on the upswing, and they're rocking along. If I can treat someone like that right at this stage in their life, then maybe I'm going to win a customer down the road. The Food for Friends card program is so successful that other, much larger food banks are rethinking their program. Glenn Pearson, co-director of London Food Bank, believes it's time we took a serious look at the politics of food. We're saying to people, if you're an average citizen, go to a grocery store if you want food. Go to a market, whatever. If you're poor, go to a food bank. So we have two doors. We have a two-tier system. And what, what we're trying to say is it's time to change that, that you know, food and the access to food is the new civil rights thing. It's the new gender thing. We have to work towards where people get equal access. Equal access to food, or food as a human rights issue, is not something we think about. Professor Rich blames the media, especially the CBC, for supporting food charity days at the expense of other basic human rights. If you're gonna have a food charity day, why don't you have a right to food day? Why doesn't the CBC support adequate welfare benefits? Why doesn't it support the living wage? Why doesn't it support uh, adequate childcare? Why doesn't it support social housing? Why aren't you explicit about that when you're explicit in supporting charity? because charity is very much part of a right-wing agenda. Steve Giuliano believes the only way to ensure that enough food is available for everyone is to shut down food banks across Canada. I believe 
that the food bank system has become so indoctrinated that we have dug ourselves a very deep hole and we're going to have to dig ourselves out shovel by shovelful. We aren't going to do this overnight, but it can be done. And I believe that we can do something very wonderful that can support a lot of uh, less fortunate people in this country if, we, if we're willing to try. We are just as good people as anybody else and we deserve to have the food and the opportunity just like everybody else.